All right. So now we've got the the local variables are are holding the values that we want. So we have to now in the, in the um, we have to actually modify the values in the array itself. So create another action on deck and then we want to set at x we want to set the value at, at slot 1 equal to the value in card 2. And we want to uh, do the opposite. We want to set at x the value in, let's see, we had we had slot 1, so this will be slot 2, and this will be card 1. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try it out. Nothing happened. And the reason that nothing happened is that we never made any connection between our array, our, our deck array, and this tableau of cards. So we have to go back in and, and fix that. So scroll down until you're in the area where we were setting up the layout, the very last line that we did, where we set the card face frame to the current Tableau card. And we're just going to make a small change to that. Instead of setting it to the current Tableau card, we're going to set it to the deck dot at current Tableau card. Let's run it. And this time it's much better. It's, it is not in the same order. It's not very random and that's because we only are asking it to perform that shuffle operation ten times. But, you know, it's it's definitely was sorted. We've got this one is in the same place, this one's in the same place, this one's in the same place. So um, let's fix that. And we could go up here and change this number to another hard-coded number. Where is it? Repeat 10 times. But instead, let's change it to a variable. And because it's a value that we might want to change, I'm going to go ahead and put it under global variables. Add a global variable and we'll call it um, sorry. Add a global variable and we'll call it g number card shuffles. And we'll set it to 50. Okay, now go back to event sheet 1 and change this to repeat 10 times to use that variable, g uh, number card shuffles. All right, let's see if it works better now that we've randomized it more. Let's go ahead and try that. These two look like they're in the same place. Let's see what happens. You can, there's nothing to, uh, it's normal for cards to be side by side to some degree in these games. You know, these two are side by side, but they were, one of them at least was changed. In fact, they're both changed. So I think it's looking pretty good. Now you can increase that number if you want to do it more. Uh, let's go back in and make a couple little cleanup things in here. First, we need to d put some comments in here so that we can tell what it is that we're doing where. So here is where we're going to start shuffling the cards. So let's put a comment in that says shuffle, make it at caps.
and so that was right above that where we set the local variable current deck card. And then right above where we set the local variable current column, uh, we want to add another comment that says lay out the cards. Now there is one other thing that would be a good thing to do, which is this uh, on start of layout event occurs first. It's the first thing that happens. Now it doesn't make any different to, difference to how it runs, but just for organization purposes, let's go ahead and s click on the green arrow next to the system and drag it up to the top so that it comes first in our event sheet. Now we have the mouse click button coming later. All right, uh, you can add lots more comments, and in the in the commented version, you'll see that I've added more comments so that you can remember what it is that each part does. Um, but let me show you one more thing. We never we we said that we were going to make this um, game resizable, but we never tried it out. So let's try that now. Go to the um, go to the layout and click on the border of the layout and then choose project properties and let's change the size window size to, to um, 800 by 600 and try running and it did resize it let's go back and do it again this time This time, let's make it smaller. We'll make it 480 by 320. And it worked again. And we didn't break anything. So that's great. All right, I'm going to go back and change it back to the, six, to the, the uh, 640 by 480 that we were using before. And I'm going to show you one more thing that you can change, and that is you can change the number of cards. So if you go back to the global event, the global sheet, and change the number of cards to be, let's say, 16, and the number of columns to be 4, and we'll leave the number of rows at 4, and let's try running it. All right, so that worked. Let's go back and change it to um, 12, the number of cards to 12, and the number of rows to 3. Okay, that's great. And we're going to leave it this size for the next step, which is to manage the turn because we're going to have to be matching a lot of cards. And there is one other thing that you can do if you don't want to match the cards. And that is, if you go back to the event sheet, and you go down to where it says shuffle the cards, and go to the second event, which is the repeat number of shuffles times cards, and toggle that disabled. T oops, click on the little arrow side and toggle the whole thing disabled. In fact, let's put a comment in that says toggle this event disabled for testing purposes. Or how about to prevent prevent shuffling for testing purposes. Okay. So let's go ahead and try it and see what happens. Okay, our cards are no longer shuffled. Well, in the next uh, video, we'll start managing a turn of play. See you then. Bye.